So the next talk is again on FPGA implementation, this time for Sphinx 256. It's a joint work between Dorian Ahmed, Andreas Kuriger, Paul Spinden, and Dorian is giving the talk. Okay, thank you for the introduction and welcome to my talk. So we all know that the clock is ticking and as soon as the hardware is big enough and ready, it will break today's public key um, encryption signing, so which is based on RSA and a clean curve cryptography. The good thing is that at least hash functions will stay alive, although they lose a few bits in security. What I will talk today is I make a short introduction about the hash-based signatures. So this talk is all only about signatures. And then I show the key ideas of my implementation about Sphinx 256. And I have some new results about the Sphinx Plus, which is one of the scheme in the NIST post-quantum competition. So a uh, post-quantum signature algorithm enables uh, signature signing even when the time of quantum computers arrived. There are several um, approaches for post-quantum signing. There is also this website which we hear from the post-quantum zoo. And there are this lattice-based, coarse-based, and so on. But whenever we do signature, we rely always or on hash function because line one of almost all signature schemes have take the hash from biggest. So they all lie on the security of breaking the hash function and hash-based signing algorithms just only rely on the security of the hash functions. So hash-based signature schemes are just the most conservative choice in this case, because we rely only on the hash function and nothing else. So let's go back to the 19, I don't know, 70s, 80s, from the Lampard one-time signature scheme. Um, I make an example just for 256-bit security, and we have all parameters are just 256-bit longs. The first thing we need is uh, 512 random numbers, which are uh, unpredictable. And for all random number, we calculate its hash. The x are the random number, and y the corresponding hash of x. And all the y's is now our public key, which we can publish. And now if we sign, we take the first line as all hash algorithm. We uh, calculate the biggest of the message, and then have a look at the bits. And for all bits, if the uh, biggest bit zero is a zero, I take the x zero zero. Uh, the next one, oh, it's a one, so I take the one, and so on, and go all this through and give this 256 random number in my signature. So a verifier with get the signature can now calculate the, uh, the biggest as well, and then check if x zero zero correspond and take the hash, it gets y, 0, 0, and so on. So, and this is simply the base idea of this hash-based signature schemes. Uh, the problem here is that we can only use such a key pair once, because let's imagine we, I make a second signature. I have already 75% of my signature random numbers are then in public domain, and an adversary may find a biggest which correspondent to uh, yeah, to, to do the random numbers which are already in public. So now let's make a time step to the closer. And this scheme has been uh, introduced a little bit, so that instead of we need 512 um, random numbers, we just need uh, much less, and we can sign more than one bit per uh, per random number. It is paid with a bit more computation time, but it really shrinks the key sizes and, more important, the uh, signature sizes. So what we have so far is a secure signing system, which is quite fast because it's only hash calls for a small input. And, but we still can only make one signature per key pair. 
So then we come to the idea of Merkle trees, where we just put some key pairs together. These are the as example for four key pairs. We have x and y. X is the secret key with the corresponding public key. And let's take just the hash of the public key and then hash some public keys together until we get this structure here. So all the n's are a function of the public keys. And if we now want to sign with, let's say, the key pair 2, we simply put the signature, the public key, and these two yellow nodes so that the verifier can verify if he takes the hash of n20 and n30, it gets n11. And if he takes the upper layer, uh, n01 and n11, then he should get the top node. And so he can check if the public key from the one-time signature is correct and can therefore al also verify if the whole signature is correct. But we still have a problem. Um, we have to have a list where we write which um, private keys, which key pairs in the, in the nodes did we already use. So because if we have, I don't know, a crash or something of our system, we have to ensure that it's not start from the beginning, from the key pair one, if we already used it. So it's kind of problem, and it's called the state-based, which is a criticism of hash by signature. And now, this is where the Sphinx came in. I think this is a group published in 2015, a group around Andreas Hilsing. And so the basic idea is make the, the Merkle tree just very big so that we can choose a random start point. And then we don't have to make this list. And the, a big, big tree needs a lot of competition because to calculate the public key, we have to calculate the whole tree. So the second idea is that they break this uh, whole tree in small subtrees, and every subtree kind of signs the previous public key. And so we can build a really huge tree with less processing power than if you like one big tree. And the third thing is that in the very lowest level, where we really sign our message, we add some security margin that if we take the the same node twice in the, because we choose it random. It's not broken yet, so we can have a few signatures on the same starting point. And this is the picture from the <laughs> Sphinx presentation, which I stole from the authors. Thank you. <laughs> OK, this is about the scheme of Sphinx. And what I did is I took the algorithm and put it on an FPGA. So I started with counting how much processing do I really need. So this is the, what you see here are the functions. And it's mainly the ChaCha permutation and the ChaCha 12, which have to be processed a lot of times. Um, and this is also the basic idea for my hardware. It's simply if I have a very fast calculation for this ChaCha permutation, I have a fast signing implementation. This leads to this architecture. Uh, in the center is the ChaCha 12, which can, which can calculate the pCHACHA and the ChaCha 12 instructions. And it's a fully unrolled pipeline. So I can give a message in on the top and every cycle. And it goes through all stages. All is unrolled. This had, uh, this had the advantage that there are no marks, marks for the rounds because they're just linear through. And then on the output, I got always a result. This leads to very high throughput in the hash function. And the system around is just, uh, it's just built to ensure that I can really handle one input and one output per clock cycle. And if you do a hardware implementation, side channels are always a team. Uh, what you see on the left is the scheme again with the horse, which is this few time signature scheme, and this 12 trees up here. So this is just a single channel. 
And what we found so far is that you, you can see and you know where it is. And if you make so you have closer look on the side channels, you can find out which starting point you choose. So the running starting point. But we did not manage to get any private bits because the starting point is always in public domain. It's part of the signature. And so for the moment, we are safe with our implementation. So, but this is not the end because for the NIST, uh, not competition, the authors made some changes to the to the scheme. Uh, it mainly they changed the hash function to SHA3, so shake, to, to shake. Um, the signature scheme in the bottom is a bit different, and they generate masks. I didn't talk about masks yet, but they were in the keys before, and now they are. Either, either randomly generated, and this just reduces the key size a bit. Um, compared to the Sphinx 256, they have some trade-offs. Um, actually, they published six in instantiation, three for every uh, security level, and there is always a fast version, which the signal is a little bigger, and the small versions, which is also slower. So I took this new algorithm and adjusted my implementation. And as you see, it always looks the same than before. It's a little bit more generic because um, there are the different security levels and the hash function changed. Of course, there are also some changements in the control unit in the state machine, but they do not affect the performance of the implementation a lot. So, and here are the results. But you can see on the first view, it's especially compared to the presentation before, it's quite big. Um, but it's easy to get a high frequency on the hash function because, as you may know from the SHA competition, um, the, especially SHA 3 is very good for hardware implementation and we get a high throughput. There are no additions or so, it's just combinatorial. Um, processings, and this is really good for hardware. Um, our latency is in the is in milliseconds, which is maybe comparable to some RSA implementations, uh, but they are quite big, but it's not huge. So let's see it this way here. You see these red hearts. This is I love FPGAs, and this is why I put this one. Um, the blue dots are the performance result of the authors for Sphinx Plus, which is in the NIST competitions. And they have a second instantiation with the Haraka hash function, where they have uh, an accelerator on their uh, processor. And the blue to green compared is uh, more or less a factor of 10 in speed. And compared to my FVGA implementation, I got more than a factor 10 again. So Compared to only the processor without acceleration, I'm more than 100 times faster. An interesting side note here is that the Sphinx 256, which is the red one, performs quite well compared to the Sphinx Plus, which is now at the NIST competition. So to summarize, um, uh, I think it's the first implementation of Sphinx. I have not seen any other published. Um, I have got 600 signature preparation. If I have one instance on an FPGA, it's a, on a Kintex 7 from Xilinx. And it's quite uh, robust against side channel attacks. Do you have any questions? Thanks, Dorian, for the talk. We have actually time for plenty of questions, so volunteers first. You mentioned that it's protected against side channel, uh, simple power analysis. Can you elaborate a bit why? Because uh, as far as I understand, it's just a fully unrolled, pipelined implementation. So like, where does the protection come from? Um, so it's actually unprotected, but it's hard to attack. Okay. <laughs> um, 
And you didn't we, succeed. We, All right, okay. Uh, we didn't succeed in, a, in okay. attacking. Um, the thing is that the key bits are just part of the input of the hash function. And so the Ketsiak, I think there are some papers which attack Ketsiak, but I don't know if uh, by heart if uh, from an FPGA implementation. And so we have about 60,000 flip-flops in the Ketsiak, and it, I, I turn it all always. So there are always 50% of this flip-flop toggling. And we made some correlations. If we just change a single bit in the input, um, we had like weeks for uh, tracing. And we have like a million traces for the first. And we changed some of the input, make a million traces again, and then a test, of course, with again a lot of traces. And then we try to correlate, but we could not find a difference in the yeah, okay. in, the, in the correlations. Do you open source uh, source code? Nope. Okay. <laughs> because it would be a nice challenge, I guess. <laughs> I, I know it's, it would be nice. So you have <laughs> actually asked the sales from the company which All right. owns the, the IP. So sorry. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Okay. Hi. Um, which processor did you use for your performance comparisons? Oh, uh, I think, that, do you mean this one here? Yes. Ooh, I think it's a three half giga, three point five gigahertz. It's the this one which used the outers from Sphinx. I don't know by heart which processor it is. It's also not my code, but I know that the outers are in here. Maybe they can give an answer. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, thank so you. So it's a, I think it's a Sky. It's a Skylake with three half gigahertz, something like this. You said it's in a product. Is a product available for purchase? Uh, it's a HSM, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, okay, of course, good. if you want one. <laughs> Are there any further questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again.